We're going to look at troubleshooting fan issues. Now I must start this with a disclaimer that I've been a fan engineer now for a little over 11 years and what I've got on the board behind me are many of the things that have come across my desk in these 11 years. These are ways that I've dealt with them and I'll talk about a couple of problems I've seen, ways we've uh, dealt with them, but I promise you as much as I would love to, this isn't going to cover all of it. There's going to be some stuff we miss, but hopefully at the end of this video you will have a really good idea of how to troubleshoot and hopefully correct fan issues in the field. So it starts off with number one, there's a problem. And I have been on the receiving end of many of these calls. The problem usually is this. You have a system and maybe you're the user. You're the one that needs that system pr to produce a good. Or maybe you're the original equipment manufacturer of the system and you need the fan to make your system work. Either way, the call usually comes to us because the system is not working properly for whatever reason. You're not getting the output that you need from the system and at this point you have canceled out any other issue but you assume that the fan is likely the problem. So we're going to start with the assumption that you consider the fan to be the problem and you need a solution to your problem. So we're going to look next at number two. What is the solution? What are we going to ask for and need from you so that we can look at the fan issues and try to sh troubleshoot them properly? First, we're going to ask you to verify a couple of things that you may think are very basic, but you'll be surprised at how many, issue this, how many issues this catches. We're going to ask you to verify rotation and speed. Drawing a couple of pictures up here. Hopefully it helps you understand. In a centrifugal fan, you've got an inlet, you've got an outlet. And we're looking here, the outlet is right here. The outlet is always going to indicate how your wheel needs to be spinning. It needs to be spinning in a way that it is sending the gas out the outlet. So in this case, the wheel needs to be spinning in this direction. Check to make sure that's happening. A centrifugal fan will always move air from inlet to outlet, even if it's spinning backwards. So if you're running it backwards, you're not getting near the air pressure that you need, just reverse the rotation and you might find out you just fixed your issue. The other thing is speed. And the reason we ask to verify speed a lot is because you're getting your speed off of an output that's digital. Something where you've got your electrical already set up and you're looking at a screen and giving us a speed. Now most of the time that's going to be set up correct and you're giving us an accurate speed. But in order to be sure, we ask you to go and find the shaft that is driving the fan wheel and put a tack on it. I've drawn a little tack here in green if you can see that. So inside on the shaft, put a tachometer and then put the guard back on. There should be a hole in the guard to read that tack with a laser. And we want you to verify the operating speed of the fan with the laser to make sure there's not a connection issue in the electrical that's reading out in your output. Okay, so those two basic things, you might have already just troubleshot your fan performance. If that didn't do it, if you verified, rotation's good, speed is accurate, still having a problem, we move on. The next thing that we're going to look at is we as fan engineers, we want to help you solve this problem. These are the measurements and information most commonly needed. And I've got a full list here. You may be able to get some of them, but not all of them. But here's what we're going to ask for. The first thing is the horsepower being consumed from the, from the motor does not lie. We love getting horsepower information. So we ask you for voltage input to the motor. We ask you for amperage coming off the three legs on a three-phase motor. And we ask for a photo of your motor nameplate. Now we use these three bits of information to plug into a calculation to figure out what your motor horsepower is. We're going to relate that to the fan curve a little bit later. 
The next thing we want to verify is the temperature of the gas at the fan inlet. And the reason we're only asking for temperature is because we're assuming it's air. Now, if you're working with a gas that is not air, we need you to calculate and send us what the density is of that gas or give us all the properties of the gas and let us calculate it. So that's why we're after the temperature at the fan inlet. The fifth thing, static pressure is a fairly easy thing to read in the field. You put a hole in the inlet, you put a hole in the outlet, and you stick your uh, static pressure gauge into those holes and you read what your static pressure is at the inlet of the fan, at the outlet of the fan. Give us those two numbers so that we can look at the static pressure differential being read at the same speed, temperature, all these things. We're assuming we want all this information measured at the same time. Lastly, I put volumetric flow and we put this last for a reason. Volumetric flow is extremely difficult to measure. And so trying to get an accurate measure in the field is very difficult. We don't really need this. If you've measured it and you want to give it to us, go ahead. But we can use your static pressure, your voltage amperage, photo of the motor nameplate, temperature at the fan inlet to calculate what the volumetric flow is as we move ahead here. So continuing with the solution over here, you've I'm assuming you have now given us this information and we want to now make an ideal fan curve at your actual condition. Often this fan curve is going to vary a little bit from the fan curve that you bought because your actual condition might be a little different, different temperature, different operating speed maybe. We're going to make you a curve based on the information you gave. And so let's say that curve it's going to look like this. Up here we have static pressure. Down here we have volume. And I made that a little wonky, but let's pretend this is horizontal. And we've got a, I'll use green for the fan curve. The fan curve is going to look something like that. Again, this is a generic fan curve for maybe a backward curve, backward inclined fan. But this is just your generic fan curve and your relationship to static pressure and volume. And so as your volume grows, your static pressure drops. Also, what's going to be on this curve is a horsepower curve. And that horsepower curve is going to look something like that. Assuming it's a non-overloading horsepower. So we are going to produce a curve that looks something like this. So you have a fan operating at a speed that you verified for us. This fan curve is based on a density calculated off of this information that you gave us. temperature specifically. The voltage amperage photo of the motor nameplate allowed us to calculate the horsepower. So now what we're going to do when we make this ideal fan curve at your actual conditions, we're going to find what we calculated to be your motor horsepower. Now motor horsepower typically on your fan curve graph, it is out here. It's also on a vertical. And so this is horsepower. We're going to take your point. Let's say you measured a horsepower that roughly equates to right here. As we look over here at the horsepower graph, we find that point, we come across, we make a dot in it. That is a horsepower you measured in the field. Now we come up on our ideal curve, wherever the horsepower point is, draw a vertical line. So in this case, we're going to make vertical line. I hope that's pretty vertical. Put a dot there. Now again, for the sake of this video, we're near the peak. A lot of times this is what we find when we get uh, performance conditions from the field. So if we're operating right here based on horsepower, we can take this number and come to the left 
and determine what the static pressure would be based on that point on the curve and how it reads on the y-axis, which is static pressure. So again, back to here. If you gave us your static pressure at the fan inlet and outlet, we can verify now did the horsepower that we got and the static pressure reading that we got match an ideal fan curve. Now I keep using this word ideal and the reason I use it is fan curves generated from the factory are based on ideal conditions. We've got a couple of videos showing some information on that. You can go watch the making of a fan curve video to see what our test lab looks like when we're creating a fan curve. You have a nice even flow distribution into the inlet and the outlet generates an even flow distribution over the period of a certain number of lengths of duct. That's ideal. Often, you're not dealing with ideal circumstances in the field and that's why we have this point D under the solution. We want to see photos of your installation so that we can hopefully help understand potential system effects that you've got in play. So, some system effects include 90 degree turns coming into an inlet box, right off the outlet, maybe turning in the opposite direction of the air's natural flow. We pick up things like this when we get photos that help us to understand that it's possible, it's probable, you're not operating exactly on the ideal fan curve. And so if we were to draw a curve after we get an installation photo, including system effects, it might look something like this. The curve would start out similar, it would start to break away, and then as we come down, it would grow further and further apart. Because system effects are more pronounced as the volume gets higher. So this might be what your performance curve looks like. And so you might be operating down here at that point. If you're operating at that point, it's less static pressure. Again, we can look back at what you calculated, apply it again against this graph, and maybe get an idea of what's going on, why we're having performance issues, if it is truly related to the fan. We've been through a lot of steps. Hopefully at this point, if you've been following along, if you're trying to troubleshoot an issue yourself, you found it. But we have had cases where we still haven't got there. We've done all these steps and still the readings don't make sense. Let's take, for example, your horsepower reading and your static pressure reading. And back here on this curve, we got your horsepower right here. Remember, horsepower doesn't lie. And the static pressure reading we're getting looks like it's right around here. Doesn't make sense. So what do we need to do? These are the next steps. I mean, at this point, we are into the weeds. We've got something wrong. We've got to figure it out. Here's a couple of options. Number one, it is possible you have a faulty fan design and it must be corrected. Now, hopefully you're dealing with reputable fan manufacturers that produce fan curves based on tested analysis. We do performance test curves for our fans. We determine volume, pressure, horsepower based on a test lab. We produce a curve off of that. Hopefully you're working with fan manufacturers that do that. If so, this is unlikely, but it's still a potential root cause. We can look at that. Second, check your system thoroughly. I mean, just going from experience, some of the things that I have seen are one of the number one issues is often leaks in the system between the point from where you want what the fan is supposed to generate and the fan. So you got maybe three leaks in the system that are bringing unwanted air in and the fan is working through that air, but that air isn't helpful to what you're trying to move. So you need to seal up your leaks. A lot of times you find leaks in the system, you seal it up, you'll find the fan is working properly. Finally, if none of that has worked, the numbers don't make sense. This doesn't line up. 
we're at a loss, bring a fan engineer to the site. If you want to start with that, that's not a bad option. But if you have worked through all these steps, you've been diligent, you've tried to understand what's going on with my fan, and it's just got to the point where you want to tear your hair out, like I clearly have, you want to probably bring an engineer to the site, take a look at it, try to understand it from our perspective, and see if we can help you finally troubleshoot your fan performance and get your system working properly.